When was the first moment you knew I loved you? <laughs> Deep at the beginning? Oh my gosh. Um, I think when we met in high school, that was a different stage of our love, but I think when you came back to me and we were sitting down in my living room and you gave me the full letters and I just was reading through them and we were both crying and talking about our future and just plans and hope for the future. I think that really hit me and it settled in that I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. I knew we had some hurdles and things like that and the beginning wasn't as smooth as we probably wanted it to be, but I knew. Put into words the story of us. <laughs> yes. I Go love on. talking this about is... this. <laughs> um, you know, the definition of, of probably puppy love at 13, 14, um, you know, began over a game of ping pong and just continued for three and a half, four years. And, you know, unfortunately that came to an end and we both went our separate ways and, you know, a decade passed. And I think, you know, we didn't speak at all for three, over three years and trying to, you know, convince myself that, you know, I wasn't still in love with you and that I need to move on. And why can't, you know, I get this, this girl out of my head. And so, you know, when I, finished school and I knew my life was about to begin, um, you know, it was just a sensation that I knew where I had to begin that search and that had to start with you and it couldn't have been anywhere else and I didn't want to look anywhere else and it just made complete sense that I had to, I had to risk it and, and just see, you know, what would happen if I showed up at your door 10 years later and just said, look, I just, I really need to talk to you. <laughs> and, you know, you gave me the opportunity and that's where stage two of our love happened. And you took a huge risk on your end, um, leaving a six year relationship. You know, I can only imagine what that was like for you and what courage that took. But I think both of us kind of knew at that moment, you know, this is forever and, and this was, where we were meant to be. And I think the past year has only solidified that, you know, finally we've gotten what we wanted in high school, what we always talked about, what we dreamed of, what we drew, and now we're living it. So I'm super thankful that we've taken the risks we have and gone the places we have and I'm nothing but looking forward to our future together. It hasn't even started. It's hasn't crazy. Even started, I know. <laughs> and look at all the stuff we've done. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. What do you think is presently the biggest challenge in our relationship and what is it offering us? The biggest challenge in our relationship. I think our trust, I think compiled past issues plus what happened at the beginning. Um, I feel like it just kind of shook things up and what is it offering us? I think our end goal is obviously we want to choose each other every day. So making sure that we do that and incorporating rebuilding trust and things like that in order to get to our end goal. I feel like we're both down for the ride and we're going to do what it takes. It might take a couple years or a couple months, however long, but I think it offers us um, just an end goal to make sure that we always maintain that and protect our sanctuary. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, it does. 
What do you think is currently missing from our relationship and what can we do to change that? Structure. In regards to what? Where are we going to be in the next oh. <laughs> two months? You're six talking about months? Me being a morning person, you not. <laughs> no. no structure. I mean, I have no job. And you're working at the hospital. I'm working for free at a hospital, so I don't have a job. But, you know, structure. Six months, we're going to be gone. And then when we get back, I'm going to finally have a job at at a hospital we're both going to be in a completely different area we're moving so for a long time there's going to be a big shift in in everything after a year ago you were living in a completely different state i think a lot of stuff has been shaken up recently and i think it's going to be continued Your style <laughs> it's, it's a bit of my style but i know that you want you like a plan, you like to know, you know, <laughs> next month where you're going to be living and stuff. And I also want that for you. I want that for myself one day, you know, to have a family and settle down and call a place home. So I think the biggest thing we're missing right now is structure. But I think it's... I'm it's, okay with where we're at right now, right. though. I feel like once we find out where you are, we'll be able to have more structure. Yeah. But I'm okay with... <laughs> and thank you because... Being along for the ride. It takes patience. You know, you're worth it, though. Thank you. If you could go back and change anything about our relationship, what would it be and why? Nothing. I feel like I feel like we needed to go through certain experiences in our life to get back to where we were. And, you know, we were kind of talking about this the other day. It's like if you would have came back to me the second time around a year earlier or a couple months later, I don't know where either of us would have been. You know, you started studying after we talked again and time would have gotten away from us. So I don't, I think, I think your timing the second time around was perfect. And I'm grateful to have, you know, gone through that period of your life of your testing and everything like that and making the memories we did when we did them because I don't, I really don't know if it would have been good prior to that. <sighs> when did you see me most vulnerable and what did it teach you about loving me? Most vulnerable. Hmm. I'm trying to think of one. The day I came back. You were pretty vulnerable there. I was, but you know, to, like even opening the door and and accepting me into your home and hearing what I had to say and speaking honestly on your behalf about what you would think about this crazy guy and his idea and what is he saying to me? And, and you were honest and you told me exactly how you felt all these years and whether or not you could see this being a possibility, why or why not. And, you know, not a lot of people would be open to doing that. And I feel like you, I could just tell you were being really sincere and honest. And I really appreciated that. And I didn't know if it was going to be like a, hey, get off my lawn. Why are you here? This is weird. My desert rock. <laughs> <laughs> desert rock or whatever, you know, but you sat down and you had a conversation with me and I have the utmost respect for you for that. But I know it took a lot from you to tell me what you told me in your position. It's not easy to do. So. I'd probably do it all over again. I definitely would. <laughs> If this were to be our last conversation ever, what would you never want to forget? Um, if this were our last conversation, just the love, the pure love that you have for me and I have for you. Um, I never want you to doubt that 
I would do anything for you, go to the end of the world for you and conquer anything. I want to spend the rest of my life with you and so I'm willing and open to doing anything. Thank you. I wouldn't want you to forget any of that. And I'd try to remind you as much as possible, you know, how I felt about you and the things that I've told you are true. And, and I just wouldn't want you to forget that you're the love of my life. You're my soulmate from now until the end of time. And even if this were our last conversation, I would be totally at peace because I met my soulmate. I got a chance to spend, even if it was only a year round two, that's a gift. That's an absolute gift. Yeah. And I am so thankful. You've done a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. Do you want to ask some of these questions to your significant other? Check out the and couples edition at theskindeep.com slash shop.